we've looked back at the St Johnson game and we try and break it up so Laz is taking the forwards and the managers touch on individuals and my focus is talking to the sixes and the eights uh, and that to the, to the in layman's terms that's the defensive midfielder and the two attacking midfielders that are slightly higher on the pitch. All right, I don't want to stand above you and tell you what's the problem, I want you to tell me what the problem is. So you're st t starting to take a wee bit of ownership of what you're doing, all right? I'm basically touching on distances that they they take up in the build-up phase. My responsibility this week is to make sure that the distances are not too big because if we give the ball away then that's the holes that you get countered, uh, countered in. So I'm basically showing what was good from the weekend, what can be tweaked. Then I will take it forward into a training session where I will then incorporate fullbacks and wingers. If you start playing, he starts playing. When he starts playing, he starts playing. You're always good to tell me when you're no good, but when you do something good, you've got to own it. You've got to be confident in yourself. Education liberates people, and I think footballs are no different. Some players learn from the audio, so I can tell Alan Campbell, boom, it's in. Some other people maybe need visuals on a, on a computer. Some people actually need both. Some people need three. They actually need to live the kinesthetic part. So we try to cover all the four bases of learning, which is obviously your audio, your read, write, and your visual. Robbie? No? Barry? Good. That's it, lads. Cheers. This is my, I think this is my ninth year coaching. I went in at Fourth Division Norway and, and stayed there for three seasons and then ended up coaching at a higher level in Norway and then bounced over to the Faroe Islands where I managed there um, for two years. So it's been an unconventional route, but one I think I had to go through. I like dealing with egos, I like dealing with personalities that quiz me. I like to be tested every day. And young boys are sometimes too loyal, whereas you just become. You don't get challenged mentally, me, because I come to work every day, I want to get better, I want to be better the ne next week than I was this week, so I get that from the manager, I get it from Laz, Hinchy. I mean, you say coming to your work every day, it's, it's no work for us, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like work for me, um, getting up at 7 o'clock in the morning, coming in here, it's, it's a joy, it's a pleasure. No, no, Long is no with me, you're with me, Paul is with me, Dino, Jamie. We are implementing three patterns in the midfield area that will hopefully assist us against their opponent in the weekend. Don't overdo it! Don't overdo it! What do you see? Go on, Mark! Bang, bang! Bang, bang! I've given them three scenarios and the theory behind it. How to move around the football pitch in sync. So when it comes to Saturday, they have the theoretical moves that will help them. It's basically going through two or three different scenarios that if an opponent figures out one, we can flip to another one. That comes for your interpretation, doesn't it? Brilliant, so let's go back again just for the opposite side, Nathan. To kind of boil it down, it's the thoughts that you ask yourself, and it needs to be every half a second, because the picture changes half a second. Your opponent moves, somebody slips, the ball bounces, it sticks in the mud, you've got to think constantly, and it's every half a second, so if you're no thinking, you're reacting. So we try to have the players constantly evaluating to be proactive. Yeah, there's days where we need to free their minds up, as the manager would say, free their minds up, let them go and play. We need to do that as well, but I always think the best players are so pro they're proactive, like snooker players. Snooker players don't pop one ball, they think the third shot ahead. This is what we try to implement at Motherwell on a daily basis. I've never been in a dugout uh, with, with the manager and Laz. I think there's too many cooks spoil the broth, it's a bit of that. So I, I have the, the manager wants me uh, from a higher vantage point, so if you think about it, if you're the manager, you're seeing things through through like a, a mess of players, you know, it's hard to distinguish distances and stuff. When I'm elevated, I get a better view of it. Can I tell you the amount of times I radio down, Gaffer that needs fixed, he's already saw it anyway. So it's um, it's just in case there's things missed, um, which, which can easily be done in the heat of the moment. Um, I'm kind of detached from it, so I don't get caught up in the manager's frustrations and the manager's um, excitement. It gets fed to Hinchy. Hinchy's like that, hi Mo, I know, I know Mo, yeah, because mm -hmm. I'm in his ear every two minutes. And then he relays that to Laz, and if it's pertinent enough, then it gets relayed to the manager. So it's kind of like a, it's like a filtration system. I throw a hundred things in, and it gets filtered out, and by the time it gets to the gaffer, he's fixed it already. So <laughs> that's how it works.